So I say we start. I see Thomas. Good to see you. Nice to see you actually with your with your camera on too. That makes it so much more fun. So thank you. All right. Well, welcome to our second slice and dice with the Dean today. Dr. Carol Lanham is going to be doing the cooking. She's my assistant dean of outreach and engagement in the school, and she's also an associate professor of instruction and sociology, and you know, an essential part of our EPS team. So she is going to help us make Italian grilled cheese, which as she will tell us shortly, she describes to her family in, in other ways. Exactly. I, you know, when I posted it on my Facebook page and my friends in Italy saw it, um, they said, what the heck is Italian grilled cheese? So we call it crostino, and crostino can take a number of different forms. So you can take like any Italian bread, which I bought this one at Sprouts, and it's the little loaf. I kind of like that because you can buy fresh loaves all the time. It was $1.79. It's pre-sliced. And I love that it's only four ingredients. You know, it's like water, flour, yeast, and salt, I think. The four ingredients, so that feels good. And you want it really crusty on the outside because crostino means little crust. But you can take stale bread and make a crostino by just brushing it with olive oil and putting it in the oven and essentially making toast and then topping it with anything you want. But I'm gonna show you a variation because we're doing this for our students, right? Who probably make the American grilled cheese where you get the Mrs. Ferris bread, you put butter on it. And what do we put inside, Jennifer? I'm not so good at the American cooking. Oh, well, lots of cheese, but not the, not the amazing cheeses that you have. But you know, you could put ham or bacon or cheddar, usually cheddar or white cheddar or gouda. Some people do Swiss. Yeah, so this is the Italian version of that. And I hope I have some of my students who have been with me in Italy abroad. And so they know me as Dr. Cerulli because that's like my Italian name. And um, you know, I definitely am 100% Italian and Italians love food. So I do want to talk a little bit about the cheeses that I have because I said for those who are cooking with us that you should get the fresh mozzarella cheese. So I want to talk to you about the three choices and I'm going to use the ovolini mm. for, um, the, for the crostino and the reason why I say that is because the ciliegina, which you see here, means like a cherry, a cherry mozzarella. So let me open it up and show you what that looks like. It's such a little piece of mozzarella that you can imagine oh. like having to slice multiple pieces and put them on your bread is not exactly convenient. So an ovolino basically means a little egg and it's, it's a shape like this. Ooh. And so it's more convenient, right, for slicing that and putting it on your Italian grilled cheese. Right. And then I have a third variety here, which is burrata. And this is a creamier um, fresh mozzarella. And when you cut it open, because as you'll see on the lid, it says that it's fresh mozzarella, which is filled with um, mozzarella inside and soaked in cream. So what you're often going to find is this is a little bit too wet to put on your bread because it'll make it soggy. So those are my three types of cheese and I'm going to use the ovolini in my bread and my $1.79 um, bread that I bought at Sprouts. But you know what, these days you can find good Italian bread at Kroger, La Madeleine has good bread, just anything with a good firm crust. Oh nice. You know, so, I'm planning on making some bread today. I'm yeah, in the process, but I got a little distracted by, by you know, by the election. <laughs> so Dean Holmes is a true like cook and chef and is the inspiration for this series. I just keep things simple, but I will tell you that my son 
loves crostini. Now, on an Italian, like on a menu at an Italian American restaurant, they're going to ask you to order crostini. That's plural. We're making a crostino, crostino, which is singular. And my son is going to come in and taste it. And he will tell you that it's his favorite meal. He loves it. So what other things do you find different about when people go to Italian restaurants here versus in Italy? Because you've, you've had a lot of experience eating. Well, maybe you've, have you eaten more Italian food, I assume, in Italy than in the States? Right. Like I used to have a rule that I never went to an Italian restaurant in the U.S. I've softened a little bit now, but I would much prefer to go to Jimmy's Italian food store and get my ingredients there and make my own Italian food and then eat Mexican food out, which of course Mexican food in Texas is Tex-Mex. Right. If you went to Mexico, it would be very different. And so that's the analogy I would make with the Italian food. If I go eat Italian food out in Dallas, Texas, now that the Italian club has closed, which used to have an Italian chef, it's just not the same and I don't like it. So I would rather <laughs> make my own and no offense to any wonderful Italian restaurant owners. I haven't been to your restaurant, so I don't really know. You know, it is so different. Um, I have, I mean, I know we're gonna, you're gonna talk about your, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because I, I absolutely adore my, my cookbook, which is not the same as yours. So I'm gonna swap off and show you here. So this is my favorite Italian cookbook, which is an absolute, I'm sure, abomination to a true Italian. <laughs> Well, in contrast, then, let me show you the classic Italian cookbook that I got when I was, um, when, when I got married as a wedding gift, and mm -hmm. it's called Il Talismano de la Felicità, so basically a guide to happiness, mm -hmm. and for Italians, food is happiness, food is joy, and you see how thick it is, right? It's filled with so many recipes, and it's amazing. But this is my own personal recipe, so I'm just going to tell you that I don't know what, uh, what a, a cookbook would say about cooking a crostino. I'm just going to show you my one. I can't wait. I wish I could taste it. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started and just let you know that um, I, have, I use extra virgin olive oil when I make my... Um, anything really. I cook only with extra virgin olive oil. And so any Italian would tell you you want to buy extra virgin olive oil that is made in Italy and basically imported, you know, we import it into the United States. So this is not even like a great brand, but I do have a great brand from my uh, friend, Nonno Luigi, who is always at Jimmy's sampling his olive oil, his extra virgin olive oil. This is indeed special and you want to save it, not for frying things like I'm going to do, but maybe for dipping your delicious bread for your salads where you're, you're not going to put it at a high temperature. Because right. honestly, um, extra virgin olive oil is not ideal for frying, but I don't want to fry it in corn oil or sunflower oil because it will um, get absorbed into the bread, and I just prefer extra virgin olive oil. Well, what if you were making like a chicken parm, which of course is, you know, maybe an American Italian classic. Would you use olive oil for that too, extra virgin, or would you use something else? I use it for everything, basically. Anything that, whether it's a salad, whether I'm frying, now it does splatter, you know, so you have to be careful. Um, like it's better to fry with a different kind of oil. But again, for me, I feel like the taste will be different because it gets absorbed into the bread. Now, if you decide to do the crostino just in the oven to take your stale bread and toast it, you would just brush some olive oil on it. But I'm gonna fry it. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and take a piece of my bread here. And um, these are on the small side. Sometimes you get even bigger slices. But my oil has been heating because you do want it to basically be hot oil as it's, it's, as it's frying there. 
and I've pre-sliced my orbellini so that I can just like put them on top. So they, oops, I just spilled some water. In case you don't know, um, fresh mozzarella, mozzarella is packed in liquid, right? And you would never want to store it if it's not packed in the liquid, right? And so I pre-sliced it so that I can put it on the bread as the first um, part is basically frying in there. And so, so I've taken three slices and put them on top of the bread. So that almost sounds like a quality control signal. So if I'm looking for fresh mozzarella, so I can go say, <clears throat> for example, to Costco and they've got it in a log and it's sliced, but it's not packed in water. Yeah, I would recommend packed in water um, because that's the way they tend to sell it in Italy. And I had mentioned to you that when I spent the summer in Rome, I had gotten an Airbnb and every day I would go to this little place called Di Francia of France, right? And I'd wonder how in the world can they stay in business just selling mozzarella cheese and other like milk products? And it's because it turns out my cousin said, oh my gosh, you're by Di Francia, like that is the best mozzarella cheese. Mm -hmm. So people are very particular about these things, much like they are with wine, you know? And you, you probably can't hear it, but it's beginning to sizzle here. So I'm gonna take another piece of bread to put on top, just as you would with an American grilled cheese sandwich, right? You would just put the other piece of bread on top and you want to get a spatula and really smash it down so that because no matter how thick you make the cheese it's just going to be melting in there right so you earlier you said not to use burrata and i i love burrata cheese i still remember the first time i tried it i was in an italian restaurant in in chicago in south loop i think it was it was pretty authentic because as I said, what's this burrata? And it came out and I thought, oh, wow. You know, as even growing up in a dairy family, I'd never had anything that creamy and amazing. And it turns out they flew it in every day fresh from Italy. Yes, so they take it very seriously, right? The quality. Yes. And so I would say in Dallas, you need to go to Jimmy's if you haven't ever shopped there. Now these days, you're going to wait in line for a long time because it's a very small store, very typical of an Italian grocery store in Rome. And so they do social distancing and can only let a few people in at a time. But they truly have the Italian products that are imported from Italy that you will not find anywhere else. That's true. I mean, I, and they make amazing sandwiches too. So you can go and, yeah. and order a sandwich and take it to go, but their meats and cheeses and wines and breads, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a gem. And so on that note, you can put something on top of your cheese before you put the, the other slice of bread on there. You could put some prosciutto, some salami. I prefer to just keep it simple. But one thing I forgot to mention is you will want to salt your mozzarella, right? And if you don't, you're going to have to add it later because most Italian products don't have salt added, including mm. like your crushed tomatoes or your tomato sauce. Usually you have to add your own salt to the authentic um, Italian products. So it's frying here and I'm just going to be like turning it around here because it's very forgiving. Um, I turned it over just a little too early and I'm going to show you here in a minute, but it's very forgiving. I can flip it again if I have to and, and brown it a little more on the other side. Do you ever put um, any basil in it or is it just simple? Uh, so I'm going to show you how I use my basil and my taster is in the living room and I hope he can hear me because I have fresh basil in the garden, which I forgot to um, get. And so I'm going to ask my son to go pick some of that basil because what I've done is I've pre-sliced the burrata here and I put it on this um, plate and it's very creamy, right? And so it's like as the crostino is, is frying in the pan, I just want to show you that you can do that classic Italian dish mm. where you take your mozzarella and you mix it with just beautiful tomatoes. And um, you had asked me like, do I buy special tomatoes? I do prefer a brand name of tomato. 
Um, in this case, I bought the Campari tomatoes, which are a tiny bit more expensive than the regular tomatoes on the vine. But I feel like the flavor is a little bit better. So I'm taking those tomatoes that I sliced and I'm putting them right here in the middle of my burrata. And once you put salt on everything, you would want to then um, top it with mozzarella, I mean with basil, which I have my fresh basil here. Fantastic. But I'm not going to put it on now. Oh, but the smell. If you, mm. But I have to rinse it, right? Because it's straight from my garden. But what I would be doing is I would just put that extra virgin olive oil on this plate, top it with the basil, and eat it with that same bread. So, you know, I'm telling you for under $10, I'm going to show you three different ways to eat that grilled cheese. That's great. Now, and when you do the drizzle, you use your hot end, that special extra virgin olive oil, as opposed to the other one, wouldn't you, for the drizzly on a salad? Right. I don't use the expensive olive oil, but it is extra virgin. But I would never, ever take Nano Luigi's olive oil and use it to fry. Like, that would just be a travesty. But do you hear it, like, sizzling? Mm -hmm. you hear that? So here's something, I'm going to get a paper towel because you're going to want to like soak up the extra oil and then I'm going to show you what it looks like because it's already done and wow. the sun's going to come in and once it gets a moment to cool, um, you'll let you know how good it is. And then I'm going to show you another meal that you can make. Um, I told you to get the pizza dough in advance. So I'm grabbing a paper towel. And I'm basically using my spatula to, to get it out of that oil. And I told you it does tend to splatter a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the heat and move it off the, the stove so that it doesn't splatter too much. Well, that's but a I perfect it, crust, Carol. That's just looks yes. beautiful. Yes, I put it in the, um, look at that. Yeah, that's and perfect. And that is so, so delicious. Let me put it on, my pl on a plate and just invite my son to come in and taste it. My son, Michael Lanham. Uh, but it's gonna be a little hot, but what do you think, Michael and Michael Spino? Looks great, golden brown. Uh, it is probably pretty hot. I might wait just a second, but this is one of my favorites and uh, looks like all the hundreds of others I've had, so I'm excited. <laughs> you know, I'll just go for it for the camera here. Delicious. Really excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Dr. Lanham. <laughs> but that's not all. I have more to show you. Do you have any questions before I go to my next uh, version? That looks so good. It does look so good. Okay, so you need crusty bread and the best quality mozzarella. And, and extra virgin olive oil so, and a little salt. So really that's all you need, but it's that's the quality. It. You want the crusty bread fresh and mozzarella packed in water. That's right. And I just told you, you know, that this uh, bread only has four ingredients as well. You know, just the flour, the, um, what, what is it? Yeast, salt, water. Um, and that's the, I think that's the hallmark of true authentic Italian food. You won't find so much Alfredo and rich sauces. I mean, they're there, but that's more what the French do. The, um, the Italians tend to keep it just more simple in my opinion. So, so on, along those lines, so when you have bread with your meal, do you have it with olive oil or do you have it with butter? So I never, eat butter um, unless I'm with the French and then you know their French butter is so delicious and they put it on the baguette and I love it but Italians tend to put olive oil on everything extra virgin so shall I show you the second thing you sure. can do and it's basically the same but what I want to show you is I got this beautiful pizza dough um, from Trader Joe's for $1.79 now, obviously, I could take this pizza dough right here, put it in a pizza pan, heat my oven, 
um, cut those tomatoes and the mozzarella, and I like to put arugula on my pizza. It's almost like a salad with a thin crust. But my mother, um, grew, when we were growing up, would make her fresh um, bread dough and then make what we call fried pizza. So I'm going to take the bread, the pizza dough, and um, I again, Jimmy's has the most wonderful pizza dough, and it's only a dollar, and they sell it frozen, so you can pack your um, freezer with the pizza dough for a dollar. And oh, wow. um, at Trader Joe's, I think it's a dollar twenty-five, so it's hard to beat the price. But so I'm stretching it out, and remember, my oil was already hot, right? So I'm taking this. Um, pizza dough and I'm putting it in in the oil and you can keep it simple and only eat the pizza dough fried with some salt or you can put some of that mozzarella on top and let it melt and that's another yummy yummy meal you know it's just we call it fried pizza so you didn't even have to roll it out you just literally stretch that dough Yes, but you know, when I turn it, I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to smash it. So I'm going to give it a minute to cook. And in the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about that, um, the cherry sized mozzarella, right? Um, what I would suggest if you buy the cherry sized one, and it's called Giulia Gina, which means little cherry, you get the little cherry tomatoes, right? And I cut them in half. So what I would do is I would just. Um, and I'm frying my pizza as so I do this, I'm multitasking. But I would just put those uh, cherry tomatoes on a plate that I, and again, use the extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of salt. And when I get my little cherry tomatoes here, it's just a nice visual, right? That I use the little cherry sized mozzarella Everything's like little, like, right? It's like <laughs> in Italian, we can use the word little on things like Giugina, mozzarella, ina makes things small. Um, and so it's just a little different presentation if you have the cherry size, you oh, see? Yeah. And again, I would take my beautiful basil and put it on top once I've rinsed it. And basil is so easy to grow in the garden. I do not have a green thumb at all, but um, basil is probably the easiest thing to grow in your garden. So again, I'm gonna just see if the pizza is ready to churn. I don't think it quite is. Um, I'm gonna let it cook just another minute and see if you have any questions while I wait on that. Well, let me ask you this. So you said you have your favorite brand of tomatoes. Um, but you know, tomatoes don't come from Italy. You know, I don't know the history of tomatoes. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Sure. Well, so uh, some of you will know, I do a lot of work in Latin America. And one of the little, dirty little secrets of history is that tomatoes came from the Andes. They came from Latin America, right around like Central America and, 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 um, South America. And so they, the Aztecs had them, the Incas had them. And then after the, you know, the Europeans went over to the Americas, a different story. Anyway, one of the things they brought back in addition to all the gold and silver that they stole from the indigenous populations there, but they brought back tomatoes. So it very quickly came part of Italian cuisine and funny thing, it's an American product. It's an American fruit. And I will say, I eat tomatoes probably every day. And I think I ate mozzarella every day that I was in Italy. I loved it. And a fun fact for me is that I could eat, I could have the delicious wine. And I always come back and I've lost weight when I've gone to Italy. So that's just a bonus. It's just very fresh and beautiful food. So I'm turning the pizza now. Oh, and yeah, I, I did cook it enough. I did fry it long enough, and now I'm smashing it um, so that it doesn't, you know, you want the dough to cook on the inside. And so once again, I'm going to need that paper towel to soak up the oil, then I'll salt it. And, you know, if I want to put the cheese on top, I can, and I'll just do it since we talked about using the fresh mozzarella cheese. At this point, I'm just putting it on top. 
because it will meet, it will melt because this pizza, this fried pizza is so hot. Oh, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. I mean, so here you have a very high-end gourmet, the salad looks amazing, the fried pizza looks great, and it's, it's simple and fast and, and healthy. And cheap, you know, the mozzarella is $5 here, yet any of these containers are gonna be $4.99, but my bread was $1.79. Um, the pizza dough can range from $1 to $1.25, and you know, the tomatoes don't have to be the brand name tomatoes, right? So especially when we're in season, this is three meals for under $10. So I hear it splattering again, so I'm gonna like lift it off and grab a paper towel and show you what the fried pizza looks like. Because again, you have to be careful, it will splatter a little bit, you know, and so, and probably if you're going to put them on oh, look at that. which I don't typically do, it hasn't quite melted yet, you know, um, but you would want to salt it. So I have my, you know, sea salt that I put on top and you use a paper towel to soak up the excess oil, but this will melt when it's um, cooled off enough to, to eat. So basically what I just showed you is that you can make a glustino by frying the bread, or you can make it in the oven, right? And top it with anything. Just imagine the toppings that you can put on your stale bread by just toasting it in the oven, like a baguette even, right? Brushing it with olive oil, toasting it in the oven and topping it with whatever you want for a nice appetizer, or a crostino, an Italian grilled cheese, the fried pizza, or the beautiful array of tomatoes and mozzarella garnished with the basil from your garden, ideally. That is fantastic. Now, do you ever do, are you going to drizzle some balsamic on that, on that uh, cheese and tomatoes or? You, you or absolutely could, but um, I usually do the olive oil. So, you know, I talked about you would not, Nono Luigi would not be happy, and I don't know if he's on this call, I did invite him and his son, who also is named Luigi, and I grew up with him, and if, if Nono Luigi is on the call, um, maybe he can raise his virtual hand and tell us about his extra virgin olive oil, but he would not be pleased if I was frying with this, but if I take my beautiful little um, cherry tomatoes and cherry-sized mozzarella, and I put his beautiful oil on it. It is so good because extra virgin is cold pressed and it preserves the flavor. And again, you're always going to need a little bit of salt on it. And the, the basil just, hmm, the basil just makes it, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we do have a question from Thomas Spencer asking if we have a recommendation on a nice balsamic vinegar. You know, like I said, um, I do buy balsamic vinegar and I use it in my salad and I probably have it here. So ironically, what I bought is Cola Vita um, vinegar and same brand of oil. But what you'll notice is it says balsamic vinegar of Modena. So different regions of Italy have different specialties, kind of like you have with the wine, right? Bordeaux wine or whatever it may be. And so the balsamic vinegar from Modena is the one that you would want to buy. Again, go with the oh. Italian brands when you're gonna use Italian products. Um, sometimes that olive oil will be a mix of Spanish oil and Greek oil. I would go with the pure you know, Italian olive oil, which is why Donna Luigi is sampling it at Jimmy's to kind of inform people there really is a difference, or we think there is. That's, you know, I, I know the last time when you were traveling back to the States, it, it wasn't, you know, there were so many disruptions, so you probably were traveling very light, but in a normal year, would you come back with some special balsamic vinegar from a region or some specialty oil that you picked up there? Or can you really get good quality things if you go to Jimmy's? Okay, so what I will tell you is that I remember when my grandmother from Italy, and I wish I could show you her picture because I recently found 
um, a picture of her like from so long ago. Um, and I just lost the Dean on my screen. I hope you're still there. Oh, I'm but here. I'm gonna, okay, so you're still there. You just, but what I wanted to show you is like, this is a, a breakfast cookie. They're called Machine. And this is a brand called Molino Bianco. And we used to like pack Molino Bianco in our, um, in our luggage because it's our, we love these cookies. And so we would like bring them back from Italy. Well, Jimmy's has them. You pay, right? They're, um, it's $4.59 for this, for this. And we probably pay under $2 in Italy. But I would think it's totally worth it. Oh, yeah. You know, I, the first time I saw Jimmy's is, I think this was back in 1998, and I just moved to Dallas. And the Dallas Morning News had a food critic who took you on a bus to all the little ethnic grocery stores in the area. And it was, I don't know, it was 50 bucks, but it was all day and you got to eat. We went to a Vietnamese market. We went to Jimmy's. We went to some Persian market. There were a whole bunch of stops. It was probably the most amazing way to introduce Dallas. Um, so, you know, there's so many little spots like that. I have a Syrian market up the street from me where I get the best hummus that I've ever had outside of a restaurant. Well, really better than any restaurant. But I encourage everyone to go explore some of those. And often it's, it's so reasonably priced as well. I mean, you can get things well, much cheaper than one of the big standard groceries. And one fun fact is I grew up in Fort Worth as a you know, child of immigrants, the only American born member of my family. Everybody else was born in Italy. And I didn't know Jimmy's until Dr. Richard Scott, who might be on this call, took me to Jimmy's for lunch and I've never looked back. I love, it's off of Fitz, it's on Fitzhugh near downtown. Yeah, right off 75, it's definitely worth the drive. Um, you know, my, my husband grew up eating a lot of Italian American food, like, like the Sopranos family cookbook, which I find a kick out of it. But he, he will, in, in the part of Ohio where he grew up, there was actually one restaurant that did really good Italian, classic Italian. Uh, and he won't eat anything here either, other than, you know, buy stuff at Jimmy's. Well, Jimmy's and, you know, I've been to Little Italy in New York. And, you know, if you go to Little Italy in Philadelphia, that is more authentic. But here you've really got to find that restaurant that has the Italian owner or hires an Italian chef. And because I mainly cook Italian food at home, I just haven't gone out to explore. I've been a snob about it. Well, that, I'm gonna really horrify you because my son loved, when he was younger, Olive Garden. And we'd go and eat, <laughs> just eat and eat and eat at Olive Garden. And I finally convinced him when we were out traveling that there was better better Italian food than Olive Garden. Yes, so did anyone else have any questions for us? Let's see, I think I caught the, the one on the balsamic. Um, no other questions. Well, I may ask a question. Um, oh, please. So, yeah, so, so uh, Carol, thank you so much for your time here. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be distracted from the events of the day. And it's really fun. So. Um, I joined you a little bit late, and you mentioned that there, there is an Italian club in Dallas, which you said was closed. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about it? So that- Yes, so it was right off of, of Beltline Road on, on Inwood, and it may still meet informally, um, but it used to have an actual restaurant, and, um, and in fact, you know, I talk about Dr. Scotch, who's my colleague now, that was my dissertation chair, and Cheryl Skaggs and Richard Scotch and other colleagues from the university came to my PhD, my doctoral um, party that I had there in 2011. And it was a beautiful restaurant and a place where Italians could hang out and play cards because Italians love to play cards. But it closed a year or two ago, and I think they meet informally now. They don't have a, a headquarters anymore, so to speak. All right, well, maybe this crisis will encourage them to recreate the community because it's so important for us to actually interact. So maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Well, Thank I you so much. Well, I think this would be a perfect set of, of appetizers to serve on the patio. You know, that's one thing we're allowed to do is actually socialize outside. So I'm thinking I'm going to put this on my agenda or on my itinerary for things to serve. Yeah, well, we haven't, we haven't talked much about the wines with which you can pair mozzarella. What would be your choice? Great, I yeah. have a great question. <laughs> So I knew you'd stub me with something, and I'm just not a great connoisseur of wine. I can just tell you that I prefer French wine. I like Sauvignon Blanc. But, you know, I think um, Pinot Grigio, right, is more the Italian wine. And, and when you go to Italy, because, again, we will travel sometime, what you'll see is delicious wines are under $5 at the grocery store. They do not... Of course, there's fine wines that are going to be more expensive, but most people just buy the, the grocery store wine. It's absolutely delicious. And I think a tabernella is the boxed wine. And one time, my brother-in-law, who will probably watch the recording, he decided to put tabernella in a flask and just do like a taste test. And nobody knew it was the $1 wine. You know, like tabernella is something that a lot of Italians drink. And it's absolutely delicious. They don't upcharge for just the everyday one. Well, Carol, you'll be happy to hear that we have a comment that these recipes look so good. Uh, they report usually so intimidated by cooking, but this seems doable. So well, very and good. And that was why I chose it, because we wanted to do this to engage our students and just let them let all of you know we care about you and we can't connect in person so we're bringing you into our kitchens and it's like what are you going to cook something fancy no i tried to just show you a very simple um you know series of dishes and this is how i eat so this is the way i eat this is very simple well let me ask you one other question i know some students might not have a stove and I asked you yesterday, could you do this in a toaster oven? And you said, absolutely not. But well, not this version, right? But right. you know, you could brush that stale bread with the olive oil and toast it in the toaster oven. But I just think to get that kind of crust, it's gone now because my son is eating it, but you're not gonna get the same effect, you know, because one right. is toasted and this is fried. But that would be a way if somebody did manage to get some some bread that was a little stale but you could just brush it put it in there add some and then top it, put it. toppings on it and just google it you can top it with just about anything and talk about delicious appetizers and i will call it crostini plural whether it's one or a dozen yeah you know in, in college i used to live off my little toaster oven with egg bagels, Munster cheese, and a fresh tomato. That was, yeah. that was my snack. Super easy, you know, relatively inexpensive. That's right. I mean, these ingredients were under $10, and that's with the $5 mozzarella cheese. Wow. Well, tell me, since I'll ask you one last question and see if anyone else. So, Share with us maybe your your favorite recipe that's not simple that you make from your family. Um, well, you know, a long, long, long time ago, <laughs> I would make um, egg noodles from scratch, right? Because wow. I remember my mother taking the flour, making a little hole in the middle and putting the eggs in there and some salt and you mix it up to the right consistency. And then I had a pasta machine and I would first make sheets of egg noodles and then I would cut it with the machine, which was manual, and either make fettuccine or the thinner linguine or the spaghetti, right? Because it's all the same, but it's just what shape is it going to take? And I have to report that my son has taken over the baton really from my mother and not this son, but my older son. He's got the pasta maker. He makes pasta from scratch. He makes pizza from scratch. And he sends us pictures. And I have to be honest, that ship has sailed for me. I buy my dough from the store, my bread from the store. But you, on the other hand, Dean Holmes, you're going to make bread from scratch. And you do it all the time. 
Yeah, actually, I mean, I jumped on the sourdough sourdough bandwagon. Was everyone was crazy? So I have sourdough starter that I'm happy to share if if anyone wants some. Um, so I'm making a, a like an easy sourdough loaf today. Um, it it only takes this one only takes three four hours, but my favorite one takes twenty three and a half hours. It's an extra wow. tangy, but it's so crusty. It would be perfect for this. Perfect for this. Well, and you're the one that came up with the idea for this series because you love to cook. And what's coming out in December for us? Oh, excellent. Yes, it's December 9th and also at 5 o'clock. And it's going to be Denise Boots, our Associate Dean of Undergrad Education. And she's going to show us how to cook New England corn chowder. And so sounds, lots of regional dishes from yep. all over the world, but I am quintessentially Italian, and I couldn't make anything but Italian food. Awesome. Well, one last question, because I wanted you to share this. So you do have a piece of advice for us about cooking pasta if we buy dried pasta. Yes, I do, and probably that's my number one complaint when I have gone to an Italian-American restaurant is that they overcook the pasta, right? And so most pasta, and let's just see, I wasn't, um, what, what I would recommend is buying Barilla pasta. That's the most popular brand in Italy and you'll find it at any grocery store. And right on the box, it's gonna say al dente perfection. In this case, it's 11 to 12 minutes. And that's gonna vary by the shape of the pasta. This is farfalle. But go ahead and follow those directions. Al dente means, you know, it's firm. It's not just mush. And so if you cook it like too long, it's just going to lose all its body. And usually you can trust this. If it says 11 to 12 minutes, cook it 11 minutes, put it in the colander, and uh, yeah, don't overcook it. But Barilla is an excellent brand. And here it's probably a dollar, sometimes a dollar fifty. In Italy, it might be 39 cents. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, fresh pasta is such a treat. There is, near me over in Grapevine, uh, Ferrari's has some fresh pasta that they make in-house. And just, it, the difference is, is, is amazing. It's just spectacular when it's done well. But yeah, I, I'll make my bread, but don't ask me to make pasta. <laughs> yes, but there are so many good places to shop. And you don't have to make your dough or your pasta. You can buy it and it's delicious. All righty. Well, I think that's it. I have some, one. Camilla says she might have to take me up on the sourdough starter. Happy to share. Once we get back in campus, I'll pull aside a little bit. It's really easy. I've shared it with Dr. Scotch. He's got some and I've, I've spread it around. So to quite a few of us, I'm happy to share. It's real easy. It's hard to get it started, but once you get it started, you just got to feed it every once in a while. All righty. Well, I hope you all had a good time. I, I know you're all hungry. I, I have to do a board meeting here for something else at six o'clock, and I'm that mad I couldn't cook with you. But uh, please join us next, next time, December 9th, with Dr. Denise Boots for uh, New England Corn Chowder. And I might do a Minnesota Classic in January. And I will just say in parting, un appetito, that's what we say in Italy when it's time to eat, and that's a sign, un appetito, go enjoy your dinner. All right, thank you so much for sharing with us your family favorites. Thank you. Bye, everyone.